Here's a sobering fact. About 80% of people who lose significant weight will regain much of it within just a few years. What if I told you there are five simple strategies backed by real science that can help you to be successful in that other 20%? Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board-certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. Stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to give you exactly what works when it comes to healthy, sustainable weight loss. Weight loss is one of the most confusing topics in health. Every week, there's some new diet, a new trend, a new supplement that promises miracles. But here's the truth. Most weight loss advice is either overcomplicated or flat out wrong. And the cost is real. Right now, about 40% of American adults have obesity, and it contributes to just about every disease, including heart disease, diabetes, and kidney failure. And I see the consequences of this every single day in my clinic. But now for some good news. The science is pretty clear on what works for long-term weight management. You don't need complex meal plans or expensive online courses. What you need to understand is the five basic principles that can transform how your body responds to food. So let's dive in. Hack number one, eat more protein. Most people think losing weight means less of everything. But here's the twist. Eating more of one specific nutrient can actually help you lose fat faster. That nutrient, protein. Now, why does protein work so well? Well, first of all, it keeps you full longer than carbs or fat. Studies show that when protein makes up 25 to 30% of your daily calories, people naturally eat fewer calories without even trying. One of the studies in overweight men found that increasing protein to 25% of calories reduced cravings by as much as 60%, and it cut the desire to snack at night in protein has the highest thermic effect. That's a fancy way of saying your body burns calories just digesting it. About 20 to 30% of protein calories are burned during digestion compared to only 5 to 10% for carbs and basically zero for fat. And third, protein protects your muscle when you're in a caloric deficit. So losing muscle, it actually slows down your metabolism, which is why so many diets fail in the long term. Let me give you a quick story. I had a patient, a caller Maria, who came to me frustrated because she had been trying every low calorie diet out there. And she was eating, according to her, about 1,200 calories a day, but still couldn't lose weight. So when I looked at her macros, she was getting less than 50 grams of protein daily. We bumped it up to 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilogram per day. And we kept the total number of calories the same. And when she came back eight weeks later, she had already lost 14 pounds. And what she told me was that this was the first time she was starting to feel full in years. What's the practical tip? Again, aim for 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. So most adults, that's about 90 to 100 grams per day. Now, what are some good sources? Think Greek yogurt, eggs, lentils, tofu, chicken, or fish. And this is the one change alone that can make such a difference of staying on track. Let's go to hack number two, choosing low energy density foods. This is really about eating more food, but fewer calories. And it sounds impossible, right? But the secret to this is called energy density, which is really about how many calories are packed into each gram of food. Now, food is higher in water and fiber. Those types of foods are things like fruits, vegetables, soups. They'll fill your stomach without loading you up on calories. There's a classic study that was done at Penn State. And what they showed was that people who ate low energy density meals they consume significantly fewer calories overall while still feeling completely satisfied. There was another trial that found that starting a meal with a large salad reduced total caloric intake by about 12%. So in other words, think about it this way. You could eat a small handful of chips, which is about 150 calories, or you could eat an entire bowl of strawberries for the same amount of calories. And which one keeps you longer and fuller? Well, it turns out, strawberries every single time. 
Now, this doesn't mean you can never have calorically dense foods. It just means that a good rule of thumb is fill half of your plate with vegetables and eat those vegetables first. What's going to end up happening is you're naturally going to end up eating less of the high calorie stuff. Practical tip, start every lunch and dinner with either a soup or a salad and eat it first. And a good rule of thumb is half your plate should be non-starchy vegetables. If you think about things like, I love my chips, I can't give them up. Think about air pop popcorn when you need a snack. It can still satisfy you and you'll end up saving a few hundred calories each day. Let's go into the next hack, which is all about when you eat, not just what you eat. Time-restricted eating, or TRE, means limiting your eating window to about 6 to 10 hours. And here's what makes it so powerful. It's not just another form of calorie restriction. Even when calories are equal, studies show that time-restricted eating can have further benefits like improve insulin sensitivity, lower blood pressure, and reduce oxidative stress. There was a major review in the New England Journal of Medicine, and what they found was that time-restricted eating supports metabolic health independent of cutting calories. Remember, your body has a natural circadian rhythm, and eating late at night disrupts it. When you eat earlier in the day, you give your body a long overnight fast, and you align it with your biology. Now, I'm going to be honest. Not every study shows dramatic weight loss. There's a randomized trial in 2020. They only found a modest weight loss with time-restricted eating, and some participants lost lean mass. It's not a magic bullet, but the metabolic benefits are real. And many of my patients find it easier to stick to than just counting every calorie. Some practical tips. Start with a 12-hour window like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And once that gets a little more comfortable, tighten it to 10 hours eight hours, or even six hours of an eating window. And if possible, try to finish eating about four hours before bedtime. For most people, that means 6 to 7 p.m. to maximize the benefits. All right, hack number four. Exercise is important, but not all exercise is equal when it comes to weight control. Cardio burns calories in the moment, but resistance training, whether it's lifting weights, using resistance bands, or even body weight exercises, they build lean muscle. And muscle tissue burns more calories at rest than fat does. The more muscle you have, the higher your resting metabolism. In multiple meta-analysis, adding resistance training improves fat loss and metabolic health compared to dieting alone. One study showed that combining diet with resistance training led to significantly greater fat loss compared to dieting without it. And here's the key. When you lose weight through diet alone, you lose both muscle and fat. That muscle then ends up slowing your metabolism, which is why people hit those frustrating plateaus. But when you add resistance training, you preserve that muscle and you keep your metabolism higher. I had a patient, Tom, who had lost about 30 pounds on a diet, but looked like what we call, quote-unquote, skinny. He had no muscle tone and felt weak. So what I ended up doing was adding two full-body workouts per week for him. And within three months, he had lost another 10 pounds of fat and actually was gaining muscle. Not only that, he was finally starting to see definition in his abs where he felt like there were stubborn areas of belly fat. And what he told me was, he said, Doc, I finally look and feel strong. So a practical tip is if you're starting out, don't make it complicated. Start with two or three full body sessions per week. Make them simple. Focus on compound movements. In other words, squats, push-ups, rows, lunges. And even if you can do 15 to 20 minutes, it will end up adding up and paying off in the long run. You don't need a gym membership. Bodyweight exercises at home will work just fine. Now, hack number five. This is the last hack, and it's often ignored, but I think it might be the most powerful. When you don't sleep enough, your hunger hormones are going haywire. Ghrelin is the hunger hormone that goes up. 
leptin, which tells you you're full, goes down. And so your brain starts craving sweets and refined carbs. One study found that just five hours of sleep per night increased appetite by 22%. And another study found that sleep-deprived people end up consuming an extra 385 calories per day. That's almost 2,700 extra calories per week just from poor sleep. And chronic stress isn't any better. Elevated cortisol encourages fat storage, especially around the belly. So large population studies show that people who consistently sleep less than six hours are at a significantly higher risk for obesity. And I see this constantly in my practice. Patients come in frustrated that they're doing everything right, but they're running on five hours of sleep and dealing with all sorts of chronic stressors. The moment we address sleep and stress, everything else starts working. So a practical tip, aim for seven to nine hours of quality sleep every night. Keep a consistent bedtime, even on weekends, and definitely avoid screens for at least one hour before bed. And finally, for daily stress management practice, meditation, journaling, or even a simple walk outdoors. For me, I like stretching or mobility work, and I find that it really relaxes me. But just remember, sleep isn't a luxury. It's the metabolic necessity. Now, the combination of it. Here's what most of the people that I work with, they miss. These strategies work good in isolation, but they work even better together. When you combine high protein intake with low energy density foods, you're going to feel satisfied on fewer calories. Add in time-restricted eating, and now you're improving insulin sensitivity, and then throw in some resistance training, and you are protecting your muscle mass. And when you prioritize sleep and stress management, everything becomes easier because your hormones are finally working with you, not against you. Now, I've seen patients lose 40, 50, 70 pounds simply by implementing just three or four of these strategies. The key to all of this is consistency, not perfection. You don't need to do everything at once. Just pick one or two hacks, master them, and then add another. Remember, small changes compound over time. Let's recap the five science-baked hacks. One, eat more protein. How much? 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilogram per day. Two, choose low energy density foods. Three, try time-restricted eating. Four, lift some weights. Five, prioritize sleep and stress management. Now, these aren't gimmicks or quick fixes. These are strategies grounded in decades of research, and they work in the real world. If you found this information helpful, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and be sure to share this with anyone who's trying to lose weight the healthy way. Remember, your healthy journey is unique to you. Be patient and kind with yourself. Progress isn't always linear, but every small step forward matters. Thank you so much for watching this video, for supporting this channel, and I'll see everyone next time.